you know, some people are going to come after her thinking she's underacting, but I think she's doing a <laughs> one job, man. Like, I, are you, you're with that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was going to be that uh, that person to be like, here, let's talk about the cast. We got uh, uh, Aiden Gallagher as number five. Fantastic. Uh, Tom Hopper as Luther. Fantastic. We have uh, Robert Sheehan as Claus. Fantastic. We have Ellen Page starring as Ellen Page. Very fucking boring and minute. All right, so now, people, let's go ahead and jump into the meat and potatoes, as I always say. And one of the big things everyone is going to be talking about is Umbrella Academy, which came out yesterday. So let me go ahead and play this trailer, and we'll be right back with our thoughts and reviews on it. Get up. We're going. Where? Save the world. Oh, is that all? Hey, now that was the trailer for the Umbrella Academy. It has already shown up on Netflix. February 15th is a good day to drop a lot of stuff happening. Um, Christian, I'm going to let you actually take it over from here. What did you think of Umbrella Academy? Right. All right. So let's just let the Toasties know right up front. So we're going to kind of compare and contrast the first episode of Umbrella Academy with Doom Patrol. Not like in a strictly official way, but tangentially. So just follow us. We'll make a bunch of callbacks Mm -hmm. to both shows. Anyway, um, having said that, listen, man, as I said before, this is a comic by Gerard Way, who as a musician, I want to punch in the face. But as a writer, I kind of really like. So it's constantly a struggle for me. Um, You know, I'm really prickly about comic book adaptations. I think generally they're really hard to get what was special about the comic onto the screen. Um, Yo, I kind of really loved Umbrella Academy. Because it feels like shockingly new, like refreshing. Dude, 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 can I tell you something? What? Dude, I like this shit too. Go ahead. <laughs> that was it. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. Go ahead. Go ahead. All yeah, right, I got really I scared. You. I'm like, <laughs> friendship's fucking over, Miles. Don't do this. No, dude, I, I really liked it. It's brimming with originality, right? Like, there, you want to accuse this guy of being a lot of things, but like lacking for ambitious ideas is not one of them. Like, the guy really is doing some incredible stuff. And what I like about it is just like, there's a bunch of times where I feel like I'm seeing something that I have not seen before. Even when we watch genre shows, the story beats are largely always the same. That's why we can usually predict plot twists and betrayals and all that, because we've seen it a billion times. But in this one, I generally feel like I'm seeing something I haven't seen before. Um, It plays by its own rules, if that makes sense. You know, Mm -hmm. like, I don't know what the fuck those rules actually are, but I understand that they are playing by them. And it's a lot of fun. And like the characters and the, the personality of the entire show is just, it's really fully realized. So that's my initial impression. I want to hear what uh, what you have to say, sir. Yeah. You know what? To, to echo what you said, it's it's crazy because this is, uh, I guess you can fill in the the, the Marvel uh, Netflix void with something like this, right? Or I think that's what Netflix is definitely banking on. Um, so although this is a comic book thing, a superhero thing, however you, you kind of want to, you know, typecast it. It's still new. It, like it's so new and it's so refreshing to me. And the story, I've seen three episodes so far. This is pretty deep. Like it's not just here's the bad guy and we have to save the world. It's like, okay, we're a dysfunctional family. We're trying to deal with uh, the passing of our father and we haven't seen each other for the longest time. So we have to deal with that. Um, you know, we have to deal with saving the world. And then there's like an external uh, plot happening, you know, so there's a lot of stuff happening here and at the same time i love the cast and i just kind of love how different this is so they have super uh they have superpowers and all that stuff and from what i've seen in the first three episodes we've seen the bits and pieces of it but it seems like there's again this, this focus on uh a dysfunctional family trying to be brought back together and they're trying to figure it out because they had this father who pretty much just treat treated them like a uh, lab rats here right uh and i think that's what i <laughs> i enjoy out of this and just kind of seeing everyone come together their different lives uh very different personalities and they each get the shine from what i've seen so far so let me uh, throw it back at you and let's go ahead and talk about the cast here for a second how do you like everyone portrayed in the umbrella academy christian i'm a big fan of it um and I think you 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 really kind of nailed it, man. It it it's a family show. <laughs> yeah, it's got some superhero genre shit on it, but it's a, it's a family show. It's people coming back after a, a tragedy. It's the big chill with fucking you know weird superheroes. So like you see the familiarity right there. You're able to gain an emotional entry point into it. Um, and in that level, what I like about it is that 
actor who's in it is actually really great and they do a good job conveying what they need to do which is you know in case we're doing a bad job here the i think the trailer did it but the premise is that 43 women gave birth one day they weren't pregnant the day before or even five minutes before but they just gave birth and then some eccentric billionaire bought seven of them i believe right seven or six seven, yeah yeah matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the point is like now they're all being raised as like lab rats like you kind of said and what i love about this is that you see the distrust between them the siblings Mm -hmm. and that's common in like situations of abuse like these kids are abuse victims like maybe you didn't hit him over the head and stuff like that maybe not yet but it is one of those things where like you understand that this was a project there wasn't a lot of love or morality to it um and so you see them taking it out on each other you see jealousy between the siblings you see the outcast system kind of forming and all that and everyone does a great job ellen page is like the scorned one who doesn't feel like she fits and she you know, some people are going to come after her thinking she's underacting, but I think she's doing a wonderful <laughs> job, man. Like, I, are you, you're with that yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to be that uh, that person to be like, here, let's talk about the cast. We got uh, uh, Aiden Gallagher as number five. Fantastic. Uh, Tom Hopper as Luther. Fantastic. We have uh, Robert Sheehan as Claus. Fantastic. We have Ellen Page starring as Ellen Page. Very fucking boring and minute, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, no, dude. I love it. I love what she's doing. Yeah, because it's really understated. Like, it's a real fucking sadness brimming underneath it. And I also think the way that the story is heading and also just having read some of the comics, it's like she's going to end up being so fucking important to that because that's her character arc. Oh, absolutely. She's always less than. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. I, I was agreeing with you. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, and that's what I'm saying. They're doing such a good job of laying the foundation, but basically for everyone, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so because there's siblings that aren't alive in the present timeline and we have to kind of figure out what happened to them and like what estrangement has happened from there too. And so people are dealing with it all in different ways. People deal with abuse in different ways. Like Ellen Page's character, Vanya, she's really withdrawn and doesn't trust anybody. But then you have someone like Klaus, right? Who's mm-hmm. a fucking drug addict. Yeah. And like it's played for laughs and stuff, but he's self-medicating because he's hurting. Then you have fucking uh, well, Luther is on the moon because he had to go to the fucking moon to get away from the pain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so like, yeah. there's a lot of like really great trauma bonding shit going on that I'm just I'm loving with it, all while being really funny, lighthearted mostly in tone mm-hmm. and having a killer soundtrack. I mean, it's it's such a good blend, man. Uh, and I'm ranting, so let me hear what you got to say. Come back. No, no, no. Yeah, l- let's go ahead and talk about the cast here. So right here, as I'm circling uh, Aiden uh, Gallagher, who plays number five, which to my surprise, or how did they explain it? So he can teleport into the future. He was there for a long time. So his brain is kind of what? Like the uh, the, 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 the wisdom and intelligence of a 50-something-year-old, but he still has the body of an eight-year-old, right? Right. He does such an amazing job portraying that the actor that I eat it up, dude. <laughs> I love how like when he interacts with the doctor or when he interacts in a diner, where they're like, "Hey, sweetheart, what can I get you?" And he just like black coffee, and then you know the the waitress would look at him and be like, "Huh?" He's like, right. "Did I stutter?" Like. Buy coffee, please. <laughs> but he still does it though. Like the the actor does such a great job of just still doing it, like an like an uh you know like a young kid and all that stuff. So I want to give him lots of props for that. Um, I know it's ragging on Ellen Page's character, but uh, to her credit, you're right. Uh, there's definitely going to be a bigger role that she's going to play. Um, and it it sucks. You sympathize with her character as well, where where she's pretty much neglected because she's the the one oddball in the family with no superpowers. Right. That really sucks. Um, you know, Luther's character is the, the, the big brute, right? It just, well, you know, there's definitely a lot to say about him, but he's trying to figure everything out. Um, we didn't even talk about, uh, what do I have here? So, uh, Emily, uh, Raver Lampman, who plays Allison, I kind of like her superpower too. It's kind of a, a neat and different thing. And she's of course, uh, this, this, uh, actress, right? This big actress, um, and she's trying to figure things out, too, w- with what's happening around the story. And I like Klaus, right, that he has to do lots of drugs to maybe hide from the pain or, you know, the fact that he can probably interact with dead people. <laughs> I'm sure I would be doing lots of drugs, too, if I constantly had a dead person uh, right next to me or even my, uh, you know, relative as well. So right. the Umbrella Academy, you know, before we jump off to it, um, I just want to say Gerard Way, listen, lead singer, My Chemical Romance, who the fuck cares? He is doing something special here with this show, and I can't suggest this show highly enough. Um, we even have people like Mary J. Blige 
who's coming out of nowhere, who's playing uh, one of the antagonists in the role, and she does a great job in this, dude. I haven't seen her in many uh, acting parts and bits. I don't know if you have before I toss it over to you, but how do you feel about Mary J. Blige in this? Well, I think she's fucking wonderful. Uh, yeah, but Mudbound, man, if you haven't seen it on Netflix, it's it's amazing. It's like so good. And her specifically is just wonderful. Um, so, yeah, I really I, mean, I love her character. And I, it's it's such a weird blend, man. Like, again, this is a show where like this isn't in the pilot. So I'm cheating. But I think of the second episode, there's a department store shootout with a guy trying to save a mannequin because he's in love with the mannequin. That mm-hmm. makes sense. While they're wearing giant dog hats, just like shooting with shotguns and fully automatic weapons. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense, but it does. And it's because she fucking sells it, man. Like, yeah. she's so good. She's so wonderful. And, it, and it's weird because you wouldn't associate Mary J. Blige with doing some like weird genre comic book adaptation. But, dude, she's kind of stole the show in the first three episodes that I've seen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man, love her. I think she's doing great. Yeah, no, I mean, it's an amazing show. I feel like there's one or two things I'm leaving out, but but again, looking at this cast and, oh man, kudos to Netflix, just dropping a lot of money. Listen, there's a CGI monkey in here, a chimpanzee. Right. It looks fucking amazing. So they really believe in this. And again, from the first three episodes, although there's a lot of plot and a lot of story, I'm kind of curious to see where this goes because... I think this is going to be a huge hit for Netflix, man. Um, And I think there's a lot of stuff here that people are going to sink their teeth into. And even though this is the the superhero comic book genre that you might think, am I tired with this fatigue? Am I tired with this fatigue? And DJ Miles and Christian Torres are here to tell you, no, this is different. I like it. There's a lot of good stuff to to sink your teeth into. Hell, I would say this is better than than a lot of recent stuff with with the 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 comic and superhero uh, craze because it is just so different and it's still much. Uh, it, it's very relatable too with uh, the whole dysfunctional family aspect of it. Um, so before we jump onto Doom Patrol, was there anything you wanted to say about Umbrella Academy, Christian? Yeah, I mean, just uh, if Sir Reginald, the CGI monkey, which I swear to Christ has to be played by Andy Serkis because that's how good it looks for a TV show, right? Like one of the Planet of the Apes movies. Mm-hmm. Um, if that doesn't get you, listen, the end of the pilot, spoiler alert, but this is the hook. How do they get you? All right, so number five, who was stuck in time, just got back, and the only thing he has with him is an eye. It's weird. Um, and <laughs> he brought that eye back from the future, and the world is going to end in eight days. That's the one thing he knows. That's it. That's the hook. So there you go. Like, what's going to happen? They have eight days to save the world, but they got to save themselves because they hate each other. You know what I mean? Um, It's really good. It just rides that line of being like plot, plot heavy and also character driven that you need to kind of succeed in. I love it. But here's the shocker, man. We're moving on to Doom Patrol. And I'm going to say it. I think I like Doom Patrol's pilot more. I'm going to say it, bro. And I want to fight you. Uh, What do you think? Okay, okay, so let's go ahead and play this trailer for uh, Doom Patrol. I'm playing the extended trailer. It's almost five minutes. I'm not. I'm going to save everyone the time, so we're just going to play the last uh, minute and 40 seconds because it does a good job of pretty much wrapping it uh, pretty nicely. So let's go ahead and play that, and then we'll be right back with our thoughts on Doom Patrol. Holy So that was Doom Patrol, and Christian, you said we were going to fight. I agree with you 100%. I think the pilot of Doom Patrol, the first episode, was much better than the Umbrella Academy episode, dude. Woo! Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Say what? Dude, holy shit. Okay, people. Time time to get off this fucking, it's cool to hate fucking DC, okay? Doom Patrol is where the fuck it's at, dude. They, they should, listen, I know why Titans became a thing and why they had to do that shit first, whatever. But Doom Patrol came out swinging fucking hard and I saw this and I'm like, I liked every fucking thing. I saw in that pilot and we're going to talk about Brendan Fraser in just a second here, but wow, dude. Yeah. What a fucking show. I was blown away with Doom Patrol with, I mean, just <laughs> the story, the concept, right? And we can talk about the, the, the similarities of Umbrella Academy with the whole dysfunctional family aspect of it all. But I want to see this show from start to end. Um, I'm jerking the show off too much. I'm going to hand it off to you, sir. How do you feel about Doom Patrol? 
you know, I'm a huge Swamp Thing fan. And the minute they announced that TV show, I got really worried because I'm like, they're not going to understand it. They don't understand that character, like who Alec Holland is and why it's so special that he is the Swamp Thing. And then I saw this Doom Patrol episode and they uh, they showed me to shut the fuck up because they know what they're doing. I know it's a different creative team, but if the people who made Doom Patrol are also allowing the people to do Swamp Thing to do their own thing, I'm, we're in great hands. I mean, this was everything I could have wanted for this particular type of show. Um, and I know Doom Patrol is not X-Men. I know they, they don't have this weird legacy attached to them the same way. Mm -hmm. But they did such a fucking phenomenal job setting this entire thing up. Um, uh, Alan in the chat said it already. I don't want to plagiarize him, but I was already thinking it. Very Guardians-esque in the structuring of the first episode where mm -hmm. you have these different perspectives all kind of happening simultaneously. Um, and that's how you get to know these characters. But, you know, <laughs> we talked about Brendan Fraser and we will take a deep dive on that in a second. But the idea that they fully fleshed all of these, these heroes out, these anti-heroes out, if you will, um, their motivations. And specifically what I love about it is think about their characters. Think about their superhero alter egos because they're in direct conflict with something that they had inside them beforehand, right? Like Robot Man, fucking Brendan Fraser, very cold, callous, like wasn't able to show the people that he loved how he felt. He was emotionless. Mm -hmm. And now he's got nothing but emotion, but he's a fucking robot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that irony to that. Um, uh, Larry, uh, what is it? Trainer, Larry Trainer, right? He's mm -hmm. the negative man or whatever. D dude literally had to hide. He was a gay man in, in the 40s or 50s. You know what I mean? And he mm -hmm. had to hide his identity. And now he quite literally has to hide his identity. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's fucking really smart. And now I'm ranting as well, man, but mm -hmm. I just, I, we should get into the nitty gritty and I'll pass it to you for how we do that. But like, my God, I was not ready to wake up and to love this show as much as I did. Not saying it's perfect, but holy shit, did they get the important things right? No. And you're right. Let's go ahead and just, I, I want to piggyback one more time with the, the importance of it where you're talking about, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, all, all the characters, you know, we have to talk about, uh, Elastic Woman too, right? Where she's, she was this beautiful actress from like the, 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 the mid fifties, right? Where beauties and look was so important. And, and now for her to, to hide her beauty because now she's this big blob, so to speak, it, it, it puts them now, all these characters in the reversal roles that they, they, they they don't want it's kind of like the the ultimate cruel karma punishment that they have to deal with right like these are their superpowers and it's the last things they want and now they have to deal with kind of accepting it their their new positions in these roles and how to now function going forward um dude this shit <laughs> this shit just blew me away i i know that it sounds really crazy to say right now um, but this show, I, I, I like how it starts off. You know, you, you kind of have this, uh, this narrator who just kind of speaking out, out of terms and out of box and out of context. And then we see the origin stories of what Doom Patrol is all about. And, it, you know, you were telling me it's so hard for any TV series to kind of – to introduce a lot of shit into a pilot, right? You have to set the, the universe, the characters, and – after seeing this in the one hour that we saw Doom Patrol here, not only did I figure out every character's motives, their backstories, where they potentially could go in the future, I was sympathetic with almost all of them right out the, the bat. That is very hard for me and maybe other people. I don't want to speak too out of line with it, but... How did I not only feel for everyone, Brendan Fraser, because I felt like they, they did a lot of focus on his character because he's probably the most relatable um, that, that you can you know sympathize with. But but how, how does the show do this? And, and it does it in flying spades, Christian. Like this is the thing that just blew me away. I'm like, this show did a lot right in the first episode without riding on the success or piggyback of the universe they already created with, with Titans, which anything Batman, they always have to reference Batman in the DC universe. And they didn't do any of that shit, dude. This was a confined story of what we got with these four characters. Um, and then if you want to add the, the, the doctor or, or whatever, the, the father figure, um, you know, make that a fifth. Um, but they do a lot of right here. And you uh, you understand what, what, what they're dealing with. So um, I'll, I'll let you go ahead and talk about the, the show a little bit further. But uh, how do you feel about everyone being portrayed so far? Pretty great, man. Let's compare it to Umbrella Academy because we said we would. All right. Both are very good. But something you touched upon was like you, pilots are notoriously difficult because you have to set up a world. And what that means is that you sacrifice character moments for world building moments. Umbrella Academy, really good first episode. Very plot driven, though. 
Absolutely. Right? A lot of these mm-hmm. smaller character moments are happening in episodes two and three, and that kind of informs this bigger picture for you. You start to care about them way more. Doom Patrol did this shit. They set up the world and managed to nail fucking three character moments, like like really profoundly beautiful character moments. Because like when they did the the um, negative man fucking reveal that he was gay, I was like, oh shit. Like I was taken aback for a second because mm-hmm. maybe I was just stupid, but I didn't see it coming. Yeah. And then like you said, Brendan Fraser, man, God, bl- thank you. Whoever brought this fucker back into our lives. I don't know why he was in movie jail for 15 years, but like, holy shit, he brings humanity to a robot. You know what I mean? Which should be difficult in and of itself. But largely the pilot is structured around his emotional growth, him losing his family. Spoiler alert. I'm sorry. Um, Him learning to basically be a human again, even though he's the furthest thing from human. Right. Mm -hmm. Like he has this new capacity for humanity. And I thought it was so fucking great. And again, to act when you're just doing the voice, you don't get to emote and stuff. Maybe that might be easier for some people. But I think it's much harder because you're not on the set. You're doing, you know, voiceover in a studio after the fact. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, dude, literally every single person who was in here was really great. Even Tim Dalton, um, who was recast, if you remember in the Titans um, backdoor pilot, it was a different actor. It was Bruno Mm -hmm. Bashir from Narcos. But yeah, dude, I think I think everyone was really fucking wonderful. Um, and I can't say enough about it. I mean, do you want to get into a specific part of it or how do you want to approach this? You know, I'm not too sure because I think that the big million dollar question here, uh, which, you know, I'm curious to know and let people tell me down below in the comment section, what do you think is better, Umbrella Academy or Doom Patrol? I, I hate that, that we have to pick because for right. once, I don't know who I want. Now, here's the thing, uh, you know, Unfortunately, Doom Patrol is pumping out these episodes once a week. You have the luxury to watch Umbrella Academy and kind of really sink uh, your teeth into it. Um, so, so that let, let's talk about the, the the dysfunctional family aspect of it. You know, while Umbrella Academy has to deal with everyone kind of seeing each other after like a good 15, 17 year hiatus, you know, Doom Patrol, it's all of them facing their worst fears, right? Uh, and and kind of accepting who they are as an individual, but right away, right? I, I mean, it doesn't happen almost immediately, but in the pilot episode from Doom Patrol, you notice how all of them actually uh, sympathize with one another, and they're already kind of knowing, because I guess they are much older, um, that they're like, you know what? Here's the situation, and this is what it, what it is, and I'm not going to argue anyone in this family, right? Like, I want to figure out how now we can progress and move forward, right? So I, I would say, you know, Doom Patrol has the edge on Umbrella Academy over that. Um, Umbrella Academy is, is very plot-driven, which, listen, we have 10 episodes, and I will say the story I definitely enjoy more with Umbrella Academy, but I'm getting better character moments from the one episode I've watched with Doom Patrol. Um, so what other compare and contrast do you want to do with this, Christian? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I think the biggest thing that they're similar because they're both family stories, but one is about found family, right? Like the family you choose as opposed to the family that you don't choose, the people that you're kind of stuck with. Um, and so there's obviously a different dynamic there, but you're right. Like, I don't know, maybe it's because everyone seems older. Like they do a fucking flashback to Brendan Fraser in the eighties, which is hilarious because he does not look any younger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But it's one of those things where like, yeah, because they're older and they have, it's weird. They oddly have this compassion from the get go, like them accepting themselves and their situation made them compassionate to everyone else. Rita is uh, superficial, right? Alaska woman. She's Mm -hmm. superficial, but at the same time, she was there for, uh, for Cliff, right? For Robot Man, because she's been there. Like these, this is a whole outcast society where unlike, let's call it deadly class, right? Like everyone's there because they're all different and weird, but that's somehow a problem. They've caused strife because of that. As opposed to like when you look at Doom Patrol, they're doing it the other way, which is like, hey, we all know what it's like. Welcome to the club. We're all family here. Because mm. by the end of the pilot, they're all like having their Avengers, you know, like Moment. swirling camera shot, fucking music playing, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I, I don't know, dude. I think they're both good. I think that's the biggest takeaway. I don't want to say like, which one's better? Don't watch the other one. Holy shit, watch both of them. Like today is such a good day to be a comic book fan. Because they nailed both of them. They nailed the Doom Patrol, which has always been the redheaded stepchild of X-Men, even though it predates the X-Men. And I think that this is going to usher in a whole new fandom. Um, and yeah, man, I, am I ranting now? But do you have any last words you want to say on it? No, no. I mean, I think they both do things that are different, uh, new, exciting t- to me. 
And uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's there's a, a loser here. Watch both. The watch both. That that's that's my cop out answer. You know, watch both. You're gonna enjoy both. I really believe that. Um, you know. Uh, it's hard. I just want to say one more thing with the whole Brendan Fraser, Matt Bomer of it all, right? Like these are characters that have to emote um, through, you know, the being a robot or being a, a, a mummy, so to speak, right? So is, I'm, I'm just more amazed with how emotional those moments are, those character moments I get from Doom Patrol. And I, I see everyone in Umbrella Academy and their own, they're their own stars too. Um, and they, they do everything great. Uh but in terms of differences uh, on, on how to stand out, I, I don't know, man. I, I can't really say one does anything better than the other. I'm, I'm kind of lost. I'm actually just really more shocked at Doom Patrol being as great as it is. Sorry. I know DC has that fucking like weird cloud. It's a stigma, that, like, yeah, it's a fucked up stigma dude. But I know. think that this is – and this brings me to my larger point, which is like, listen – Rest of Doom Patrol is good as this first episode. All right, DC, like you can get my streaming money because now I believe that Swamp Thing is going to be good. I believe all the other things you have coming down the pipeline are going to be good. And that is so encouraging, man. You know, so yeah, I, I, I think it's a fool's errand to say which one's better. I know that's literally the name of the video, which one's better. But I think it's about how you pick your poison. What do you like more? Do you like super high concept stuff? Like, listen, Umbrella Academy is your shit. And I know that sounds weird because there's a robot man and a blob lady, you know what I mean, in Doom mm -hmm. Patrol. But it is much more character driven so far. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with either. Watch both eventually. But, you know, pick your poison. And I want to know in the comments, seriously, like, let's have this debate. Which one's better and why? Yeah, no, you you said it. So listen, everyone, that was our review of the video. Uh, please comment down below. Let us know what you think. Is it Umbrella Academy or is it Doom Patrol? But you know what? I still think, as Christian was saying earlier, it's a win-win for everyone because it is an amazing time to be a comic book fan. And these two adaptations so far in flying colors. So go ahead and check them out and let me know what you guys think.